What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? What's going on? About to go live. 30 seconds, 30 seconds. Add people to the digital shop gate. We have a lot to discuss. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, whenever you decide to listen. Thanks for tuning in to the Progressive Action Digital Shopgate. The first Digital Shopgate was phenomenal. We got over 10,000 views in a week, the first of its kind. I'm very proud of you guys for tuning in. Now, this Digital Shopgate right here is part two. We're going to discuss a multitude of things to educate the membership, to let you guys know what is progressive action plans moving forward and what needs to be done, um, whether we win or not. There's things that need to be done to move this membership forward, and we're going to make sure that it gets done to move this membership forward. Now, um, one thing I want to explain to you guys uh, of, about how some of these offices work. Now, the president mainly deal with main table issues, health care, wages, work rules, all the other departmental things, your vice president have to be the master of those issues in your department. So when you think about voting in a vice president, make sure that that vice president is the master of the issues in your department. The president supports the vice president when it comes to departmental stuff. Um, the vice president actually negotiates um, the issues in your department, except the wages, health care, and most of the work rules. But everything else, your vi vice president negotiates it, and you hold him or her accountable and responsible for your gains or your losses. But with a strong president, anything's possible, especially the lackluster performance we have been getting lately, especially these past nine years um, regarding the presidency. Now, one thing I want to jump right into, as you can see, you see people sitting on a board right there, sitting at a table with ideas. That's representative of the executive board. Now, the executive board is one of the most important titles as a union rep. The executive board controls almost everything. The executive board decides if you go go on strike. The executive board desi decide if the contract is good or not. The executive board is the most important role of a union, if you ask me. Now, the problem with Local 100 current executive board is two things. One, they're being paid off. And when I say they're being paid off, it means that the president has released him or her to do specific jobs in the union to get away from their tools. So that compromised the issue right there, don't you think? Normally, an e-board um, member will be released one time a month, and that's just for the e-board meeting. But like I said, in this current administration, you have various e-board um, members released full-time away from their tools, and that compromised the situation. The e-board members are supposed to be for the members themselves, not for the president at all. The e-board, once again, is supposed to be for the membership, not the president. It's supposed to be the official checks and balances of the president himself. And when you release these reps, they're in a compromising position because they get used to being away from their tools. The president holds that over their head. And if they don't do what the president say, basically, they get sent back to their tools. And like I said, the e-board is the checks and balances to check the presidential power. If you have a strong e-board, then the president will be in check. But if you have an e-board that's compromised, then the president checks the e-board. Now, one thing that happens when um, an e-board is released full time, it breeds corruption. Because once again, that e-board member do not have the best interests of the members that person now has the best interests of the president. Um, 
Now, one thing that my administration did in the way that I put it together, I had absolutely nothing to do with putting together my e-board. And that's for one reason. I plan on doing the right thing as president. So it don't matter who the e-board is, who the e-board member may be, I plan on doing the right thing. And that e-board member plan on doing the right thing by the membership. And it's going to be a happy, a happy, happy, happy marriage without a doubt. Now, um, one thing I want to do while I'm president is not release any e-board reps to um, release positions. Like I said, that breeds corruption. We shouldn't have to do this corrupt. If we was legit in the way that we did things, we wouldn't have to worry about corruption. Now, um, most of the time in the e-board, in a, in a, with a democratic union, democracy, the e-board functions independent of the president himself. And that's what we need to bring back to Local 100. People think that, you know, the president say go on strike, the union go on strike. No, the e-board checks them. The people think that the president say this is the contract that we going with. No, the e-board supposed to check that. The, if the president think the contract is good and the e-board think the contract is bad, guess what? That president going, that, that um, contract going back to the president for him to renegotiate. Unless it comes to an impasse or something and then it goes to binding arbitration or whatever the case may be. But the e-board supposed to check the president at every step. The e-board today is corrupt without a doubt. And like I said, I had absolutely no say in, in selecting my e-board members. I left that solely up to Lee Ireland. He's in control of the e-board. And that was my promise to him to not be involved um, with the e-board. But like I said, the e-board is very important. Like you said, you see these people sitting at the desk. It shouldn't be no president there. They should be for the members and the members only, not the president. So that's that's one thing we have to focus on is the e-board. The e-board is very, very, very important. And when you decide who you're going to vote for this election, you need to ask that question. Um, do you plan on releasing any e-board members because if you do we've seen with prior administrations that it breeds corruption and we want to rid local 100 of corruption altogether now another thing another hot 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 topic that we're going to talk about now this is this is this is look at this smile right here look at this look at this smile right here this is paula rosario she is a station agent now a lot of people um and stations, they have some some very, very, very serious concerns. And one of the concerns that they are worried about is the closing of booths. Rightfully so, because the closing of booths is directly related to layoffs. And that's something that this union has to take serious altogether. But I must educate you guys first. I must give you guys the truth on how things work in the world as a whole. So we have something here from Forbes magazine. It says technology has already taken over 90% of the jobs humans used to do. New York City Transit is no different. As technology change, the job change. And this is not only, like I said, to New York City Transit or the MTA, this is worldwide. Technology has been taking human jobs for the better part of 50, 60, 70 years. And not even to be funny, during slavery time, um, the, the blacks used to be in the field picking cotton. Then you had the, the cotton gin, the p cotton picking machine. It stopped that. So technology has been replacing jobs for a very, very, very long time. And we must be honest with each other. When uh, you had railroad clerks used to be... Um, with, with, with station agents now used to be railroad clerks. Then they became station agents. Now we got this new title called Wayfinder, which we're going to get into um, in a second. But I want to bring up something. Um, during the 2010 layoffs, um, a whole bunch of station agents was, was um, relieved of their duties. Wrongfully, um, it, it was illegal, actually, according to the public authorities law. Now... One thing that the public authorities law say is that booths cannot close 
unless there's a public hearing first. Now, one of the problems that I have with this union is that we have absolutely no relationship with the public. The public should be our biggest allies on all levels. So if you get a good um, relationship with the public and the MTA want to close booths and that relationship is good between you and the public, guess what happened? The public is going to push back against the MTA against closing these booths. No matter, no matter what the MTA may do, the, the, the public has a say in everything that the MTA do. That's why the MTA have to have public hearings um, when it comes to these things. Now, I'm going to read to you guys the uh, New York State Public Authorities Law in relation to the closing of booths. It says, any complete or partial closing of a passenger station within the city of New York or any means of public access to such facility except for the purposes of repair, renovation, or in case of emergency, shall be accomplished only if approved by resolution of the authority adopted by less than a majority of the whole number of members of the authority in office and only after a public hearing. Very important. Notice what I said. After a public hearing. Such hearings shall be held not less than 30 days after notice of such proposed closing has given to and comments solicited from the community board as established pursuant to section 84 of the New York City Charter whose area of jurisdiction includes the station proposed to be closed or otherwise affected. So as you can see, the, um, the public has a say. The public has a say. And we need to create better allies between us and the public because the public could be the difference with us um, saving our jobs preventing layoffs and preventing um, booth closures. As you can see on the screen, this is just an excerpt of what I just read from the um, New York State Public Authorities Law, Section 1205. You can search that for yourself. Now, as a result of the technology um, moving along, you see you have wayfinders. You have wayfinders on the screen. And me personally, there's nothing that we could do to stop the advancement of technology. But one thing we can do as a union is still protect the job and make the job better, especially the way you find the position. Anybody, any union rep who says that they're against the way you find the position, they want you to lose your job. They want you to suffer. They want you to be homeless because there's no answer to stop preventing the way you find the job. Once again, technology you cannot step te uh, stop technology under any circumstance technology has taken over the world and unfortunately it has taken our jobs but like i said we can protect the job and make the job better especially um the way you find the position you know we could get um and, and and don't get it twisted no booths should close at all you know I believe that the wayfinders, until they make a better um, assault law, until the MTA join us in Albany and create a tougher assault law for MTA workers, no booths should close, for one. For two, if they're going to have the wayfinder position, wayfinders should only be wayfinders from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. There should be no wayfinders after 9 p.m. They should go back into the booths and continue being station agents. Um, the crime is up in the subways. The MTA has shown time and time again that they cannot protect us. So the wayfinders should only be available from 6 to 9 p.m. I believe that they should also work in pairs, work in twos outside of the booth. And I also think um, that they should have some type of protection, some type of mace, um, maybe a little stool to sit on something to that matter and, and also um since they standing up most of the time they need to be paid a better differential of more than a dollar an hour for doing the job and the the what the union should do they should um in, during contract negotiations they should um create a no layoff clause in the station's department without a doubt um, next contract, there needs to be a no layoff clause that do not expire in the station's department. If the MTA is serious and they and they um serious about not laying anyone off, 
then put a no layoff clause into the contract that don't expire for stations. And that's something that my administration will push for. We are all about protecting jobs. The job have to be protected. The job, we must build on the job. We must make the job better and, and things of that nature. And um, like I said, one thing that my administration will be bound to do is create no layoff clause in that department to protect the jobs. Very, very, very important. Now, another hot topic, another hot topic in um, Local 100, and it has something to do with um, our wages. As you can see, affordable housing in New York City. Time and time again, I keep telling you guys, and you guys know just like I know, we cannot afford to live in a city in which um, – we can't afford to live in the city in which we work. We spend a lot of time um, in the city working, and we can't afford to live here. And that's due strictly to poor raises. And um, the union lying, talking about we got to raise above inflation. Once again, if someone in the restaurant in industry get a um, 5% raise, a 5% raise is above inflation also. But it's not keeping up with the cost of living. And that's the important part of our salaries. We cannot keep up with the cost of living. And that's what's making us fall um, more behind time and time and year and year um, again. Now look, I want you guys, I know you guys can see it on the screen. It says for one person um, household size, if you make between 73000 and 95000 Now, a lot of people make that due to working overtime and trying to keep up, you know, with gentrification and the cost of living, we work a lot of overtime. So a lot of us fall into that bracket of seventy-three thousand um, to ninety-five thousand. Now the monthly rent for this apartment, one person, a studio apartment at that, is two thousand one hundred and thirty-eight dollars. I have never bought home a check for two thousand one hundred and thirty-eight dollars without working tons and tons and tons of overtime. Our checks should be nothing less than $2,500 after taxes. We should be able to pay our mortgage and our, our rent with one check. That's a sign that we're falling behind. My friends that's New York City school teachers could do it. My friends that's NYPD could do it. My friends definitely sanitation could do it. And I have about two friends that's FDNY, firefighters, and they definitely could do it. Me, us on the other hand, we cannot pay this without it being a struggle every month, especially if you have a family. Now, we just cannot afford to live in this city or for our salaries. Now, I want to show you guys something because this is very important right here. I'm going to put something else on the screen. Now, this right here, in case you didn't know, this is the union salary. These union reps can afford to live in the city in which they work. Now, for an example, um, Latanya Crisp, which is the recording secretary of Local 100, she made $147,000 last year. How many of you guys made $147,000 last year? Let's go. Um, John Chiarello, he made $118,000 last year. Earl Phillips, $149,000 last year. And, and it's all on the screen. It's from the LM2s. Um, let me see. Nelson, $147,000 last year. Pete Rasconi, that's the um, vice president of MTA Bus, $134,000 last year. Uh, let me see who else we got here. JP, TA Surface VP, $142,000 last year. Let me see, uh, Derek Echeverria, $122,000 last year. Where is uh, Richie, da Richie Davis, Map Stoa, um Vice President, $144,000 last year. As you can see, our union reps can comfortably live in New York City with no issue, no problems. They make the big bucks. Um, I, don't, I don't see no reps. I never see the VP at all for them to be making that type of money they don't have the type of issues that we have um as far as wages is concerned 
and we must bring them back to reality because the pay does not match the work under any circumstance. And I, I'm quite sure that you guys can definitely agree with me on that. Now, um, during this next contract, without a doubt, we need significant increases in pay. Significant increases in pay. We have not got our just due um, working for New York City Transit. We have not got what we deserve in New York City Transit. We've been getting crumbs and falling behind, and, and it's sad. It must stop. Now, um, and, and to be quite honest with you guys, if we don't get the raise that we deserve in this contract, this job will be for college students. I could promise you that. We would no longer be able to, 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 to survive off of these salaries. It's, it's plain and simple. Um, and also, when it comes to these raises, we got to get away from the percentages because the percentage, this whole percentage thing, it fools people. We have to get to the dollar amount. We want to hear how much dollars you're giving us. I don't want to hear a 3% raise. I don't want to hear a 5% raise. When I, if I win and I negotiate this next contract, I'm going to tell them we need dollars. We need $3. We need $4 a year. We need uh, 5 whatever it may be. But it, it needs to be nothing less than $3 a year, to be honest with you. We need a dollar amount. Let's get away from this percentage stuff. Let's stop talking this crazy jargon. Let's talk dollars. Dollars make sense to me, and that's just how it's going to work. Now, oh, another thing. In May, when the contract is up, we getting a $500 bonus. That is so insulting. That's an insult. A $500 bonus that's going to get taxed and it's going to leave you with about 200 and something dollars. That's not enough money to take your family to BBQs. And have, a, and have a family dinner. Matter of fact, that's all it's good for. You could go to BBQ's, have a family dinner, and for your whole 28 month of your contract, that's what the MTA said thanks. That was they thanks to you. And that's what the union agreed to. It's an insult. It's embarrassing. We need to get these guys out. They should not negotiate another contract ever for us again. They have no balls. They have no heart. They not strong. They weak. It's, a, it's insulting what they're doing to us, and I do not like it at all. Now, ironically, ironically, the people at Metro North Railroad, they work for the MTA. The people at uh, Long Island Railroad, they work for the MTA. And they have no problem um, living in the city in which they work. But... Do anyone know why the real reason they make so much more than us? You know, a lot of people say, um, you know, they have a better union. And uh, their union is stronger, right? Now, that may be true. It may not be true. But one thing about their unions is that they don't have one union representing seven different trades like we do. They have, uh, you know, a conductor's union, an engineer union, electrical union. They got... They got unions micromanaging um, their contracts and things like that, which can be better, maybe. But um, I was doing some research, and one of my friends has sent me um, this article right here. Um, and this was an article from the New York Post. And this guy, this, this former MTA board member, he is basically saying, you know, what's up with the disparity? You see it right here. What's up with the disparity between New York City Transit and um, Long Island Railroad when there's a lot of comparable um, comparable positions there? And he's absolutely right. We do a lot of the same similar work, and the pay disparity is embarrassing. Now, people will, people like to argue and um, fuss and say, hey, look, um, Conductors do more. When the train go BIE, the, con the conductor got to walk around the train. Fine. Um, what about the track workers? I think the track workers in New York City Transit work way harder than the track workers in Long Island Railroad. Wouldn't you agree? Um, and they get paid more on Long Island Railroad. How about the cleaners? Let's look at that position. What are the cleaners cleaning in Long Island Railroad that the cleaners not um, cleaning in New York City Transit? I would say the cleaners in New York City Transit work 10 times more harder than the cleaners at Long Island Railroad, right? So there's not 
any real excuse as to why they get paid more. You know, some people say, well, you know, their tickets cost way money and and way more money, and our tickets cost um two seventy five, but we make ten times more. We make ten billion dollars more a year than Long Island Railroad and Metro North. So everything pretty much balances out. Now, one thing that I noticed with um Long Island Railroad. And a matter of fact, all the companies, we go we go examine all the companies here and um in in the MTA. But I'm a, I'm gonna focus on New York City Transit and Long Island Railroad. As you can see on the screen, New York City Transit has, and this is from the MTA wide workforce by gender and race as of March 31st, 2018. So this is pretty recent. This is an MTA report. This is their numbers. I'm not making this up. This, this is not an outside agency um, doing these numbers. This is their numbers. So you have um, New York City Transit. Se oh, the number went up, actually. 78% minorities. You have Long Island Railroad. 36% minorities. Now, that is a major disparity. Now, New York City Transit is most... It, it's, it's mostly um, civil service, and Long Island Railroad is all resumes. So when you're dealing with resumes, you could pick and choose who you want. You could be more selective. You could let th these amount of people in of this nationality, of this culture, of this race. You can't really do that with civil service, even though I do think that they do it with the one and three rule. But that's a whole nother story. We'll get into that later. But. Long Island Railroad could be more selective because their resume, New York City Transit, not so selective because it's civil service and it's based on a test. But the major point I'm, I'm trying to bring up here is 36% is minorities and 78% um, in New York City Transit. Now, um, could that be the reason why they get paid more? Could, could that really be? Because I just explained to you that cleaners over there get paid more than the cleaners over here. And uh, what are they cleaning over there that's different? Track workers um, make more over there than the track workers over here. And there's more broken rails. There's more track issues in New York City Transit than it is in Long Island Railroad, um, without a doubt. Now, um, a lot of people, you know, bring up, bring up the Taylor Law and says... You know, the Long Island Railroad, they're not bound by the Taylor Law, which is true, and New York City Transit is. Well, look, the worst thing that could happen if we was to do a job a job action where the Taylor Law would be violated would be that we would get fined, right? Your president would go to jail. Now, would would uh, Tony Utano be willing to go to jail for this membership? I don't think so. Would um, the other candidate be willing to go to jail for this membership? I don't think so. You know, they not built like that, to be quite honest with you. Now, like I said, the the two things that could happen, we could lose due checkoffs, we get fined, your president go to jail, right? But um, if we was to financially prepare ourselves for a job action, you know, people financially prepare themselves, and they'll even be prepared. People out there going to lease cars, Buying a buying a um f lease finance um luxury European cars, uh the the expensive handbags, the all the European clothing and sneakers. Why we can't do that for a job action? Why we can't get focused for that? We could prepare for a strike. Our priorities is just you know in um in disarray. We can definitely prepare for one. Um, popping the bottles in the club, night in and night out, and all the frivolous things that we that we do, um, spending money. We have to get prepared for a job action just in case if it goes down. Because whether I'm president or not, whoever the future president is may have to make that decision, and we must be financially ready to deal with that. Um, as far as due checkoffs is concerned. Um, for those who don't know, dues checkoffs is basically the MTA collecting your union dues and giving it to the union. Now, I have a major issue with this. 
Why is the MTA collecting our union dues for us? We supposed to be powerful. We supposed to be strong. We supposed to be the best union out there. Then why is the enemy or the opposition or however you want to label them collecting our money for us? And they directly involve your, your, your enemy or your opposition shouldn't know how much is in your war chest. They should be able to estimate, but they shouldn't collect it for you and then give it to you. That makes no sense. So this may not be easy, but we must find a way to collect our own union dues to take that away from the MTA so they can't hold that over our head if we was to decide a, a major job action such as a strike or whatever the case is. Why we can't collect our own union dues? These guys, uh, they not thinking outside the box. They not preparing us for the future. And by them not preparing us for the future, we're going to continue to accept crumbs Crumbs, 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 crumbs. And it's very sad. And I'm upset about that. And um, we must do something about that. Now, another topic that I would love to get into is, let me put this on the screen. I know my RTO people know what this is. I know my RTO people know what this is. This is a work train, a diesel work train. Now, one thing I want my administration to focus on, a major thing. We need to do some health um, studies on the workers in New York City transit. Me, myself, I have gotten more sicker. My allergies been crazy since I um, came down to transit. Um, I just been, I noticed that I've been getting sicker working working in the subways. And we must do a health study um, moving forward. And um, how many of our titles revolve around working around diesel fumes? You know, and one time recently a, a work train passed through the station i was on the platform and i almost died um breathing in those fumes and i ran into one of my friends that's on a work train and i say yo how, how you um how you deal with those fumes you know every day and he's like look we get used to it and i'm like you get used to it how can you get used to something so toxic now one thing i want to show you guys um this is this is who for those who don't know, that's the World Health Organization. World renowned. This is not a joke um, organization. Now, they have said um, they declare diesel fumes cause of lung cancer. How many members in New York City Transit suffer from all types of cancers? And I believe that these cancers are directly related to our work environments, especially um the diesel fumes now i'm going to i'm going to read to you guys something else about lung cancer and um and diesel fumes let me put this on the screen real quick all right and you can read along with me it says lung cancer is the major cancer thought to be linked to diesel exhaust several studies of workers exposed to diesel exhaust have shown small but significant increases in in risk of lung cancer Men with the heaviest and most prolonged exposures, such as railroad workers, heavy equipment operators, miners, and truck drivers, have been found to have higher lung cancer death rates than unexposed workers. Based on the number of people exposed at work, diesel exhaust may pose a substantial health risk. Why isn't the union and its current administration forcing the MTA to do a paid health study on the workers of New York City Transit. This has went on for far too long, and it must stop. And the only way it's going to stop is if we put in an, an administration to stop it. This administration, the Stand United administration, has showed us that they cannot stop it, that they are not willing to change it, that they don't care about our health. They don't care about our quality of life. We must change that today. We must change that today. Now, all types of health studies need to go on in New York City Transit. All types. Matter of fact, in 2005, there was a health study. We could still use that today. But we need a, another one, um, an up-to-date one, and we must um, hold the MTA accountable, and we must hold whoever get elected in accountable. And if it's me, I'm more than willing to do it. That's going to be one of my first initiatives of um, becoming president 
is to figure out a health bill for us and a health study for us because um, something needs to change. Now, I'm going to put something else in the, um, on the screen, and this is actually from the MOU of our last contract. And I'm going to read. Um, it's actually in the second paragraph uh, right there. And it says, um, when discussing new technology, the parties will also consider its impact on improving the health and safety of employees, including but not limited to alternative to diesel equipment. Now, I don't. They supposed to have these meetings. Uh, I think on a. It says on a semi-annual basis. Do I think that the union have these meetings with the MTA? Probably not. Um, if they do having the meetings, do I think they sitting there and twiddle their thumbs? Yes, I do. Because where's the technology now? Once I once again, I said that the technology is taking over our jobs and things like that. Well, where's the technology at that's going to improve our health and make us work in better um, work environments? Where's the technology for clean air? Where's the technology for electric um, work trains or whatever may have you? We must move away from diesel fumes and diesel equipment. If the MTA cannot move away from diesel fumes and diesel equipment, it goes back to my first digital shop gate. Where is our hazard pay? Now, no amount of money um, can protect your health. But if you're going to deliberately have us in these work environments, you must pay us as such. And there's no other way around that. We deserve hazard pay. We deserve better um, um, work environments, more healthy work environments. And, and one of my plans and one of my administration plans when we get in is to do a comprehensive health study of all our working environments in which the MTA should fully fund. This, is, this should not be a union funded project we work on mta property this should be a mta um funded project overlooked by a serious administration that care about the health of employees all right now that's that's that topic that's health and there's a lot of things to talk about with our health um you guys can hit me up if you want to tell me about other things um message me you know where to find me out my progressive action um Facebook page and we could discuss a multitude of things now right here I want to talk about this title right here I want to talk about this title this is my this is my um it's my boy right here he's a collecting agent and you know there seems to be a lot of nonsense discipline in this department you know as far as write-ups with late trains um being rushed to check the stack and all that other stuff now, um, these guys, hardworking employees, you know, they have a very important job. They carry a firearm, you know, and, and I like the pictures you guys sent me too. It's another um, group of um, collecting agents. And I never knew that I had a whole bunch of collecting agents on Progressive Action. And I'm happy that you guys tuning in. I'm definitely going to touch on you guys' issues. And I know one of you guys um, or one of – uh this department major concern is the ava um accumulation i don't see why you guys are limited in ava days um you're not schedule driven you guys should actually have unlimited avas just like a whole bunch of other departments to carry over you guys shouldn't be capped the mta does a great job of um destroying our quality of life with our family being able to get days off being able to accumulate days the union just sit there idle um while we while while they let this go on but we definitely need um better and more avas in you guys department and we're going to work on that discipline definitely got to work on that discipline ironically one of your union reps is always in progressive action um bigging up this current administration and who knew that you guys was having major problems in that department. Like I said, the collecting agents, they sent a whole bunch of pictures. And let me see something real quick. Uh, a whole bunch of uh, whole bunch of pictures. Thanks for tuning. I mean, thanks for sending in the pictures. I'm not going away. Thanks for sending in the pictures. But um, I'm definitely looking forward to meeting some of you guys, too, to hear more about you guys' issues. Um. Now, another, another title I want to check in on, I'm going to leave this picture up there. Um, another title I want to check in on is traffic checkers. 
they are now everybody say you know we are the stepchild we are the stepkids of mta and we the redhead no 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 no. traffic checkers are trust me when i tell you there is a whole bunch of bs with the traffic checkers they stand out there in the cold they stand out there in the rain they out there getting written up because um they wearing hoods they not making that much money. I believe that they have they work part time hours. That um department is screwed, and that's actually up under Map Store. Um, I don't know what's going on over there, but something definitely needs to be done. These guys need a significant wage increase, full time positions, um, better and warmer uniforms for inclement weather, and they need their own union representation. I think that traffic checkers, just like um cleaners and stations. I think they need their own union representation, their own department. Definitely cleaners need their own representation. They need their own vice president. They need their own division chair. They need their own e-board members. Um, cleaners and station agents, it's like oil you and water, really. Um, and their issue, and as far as what their issues are, I don't think they should be mixed because one, one um, title favors over the next title and it's hard to focus on the issues of cleaners um when uh the administration is favoring station agents or vice versa i think that both of those um titles could do way better way better if they actually um had their own vice president um representing them now another another title let me put this uh picture on the screen another another uh department i want to focus on is the maintenance bus maintenance now it will bewilder me why you guys will vote for this administration again after they undid consolidation behind you guys back destroyed you guys lives um if you guys was to vote them back in i would i would not understand um that this union administration did the most undemocratic thing ever now, during the contract, they could have put um, this whole pilot program into the contract so the members could vote on it. What did they do? They waited to after the contract, deconsolidated you guys, didn't give no real warning, no anything, and just kicked y'all to the curb and sent y'all back. That's the most unde un undemocratic, unloyal thing that a union could do is make a deal behind the members back without asking them for their input or giving them the right to vote on it. You guys in maintenance, I'm expecting you guys to stand up and remove this administration from office for that egregious, unloyal act that they did. Now, I'm quite sure it probably worked out for some of you guys, for, but for the most part, it was wrong. It shouldn't have been done like that, and you guys should definitely um, be wary of, the, uh, of this administration. Now, I want to talk about something good. I'm going to talk about something good. Perks, MTA perks now why as mta employees we do not get the the good perks the perks that matter if you're not going to give us the raises then give us the good perks that make sense like uh how about express bus why we can't ride on express bus why we can't get that perk how about easy pass we can't afford to live in the city in which we work the least the company could do is give us passes to supplement for the raises that we not getting. How about that? Give us easy passes, um, especially for members who live in Staten Island. But everybody should have the easy pass. And we all should have Metro North and Long Island Railroad. Once again, this, this administration that's in now totally lied to us to get us to sign a contract. They said that we getting both um, the universal pass where we thought we was getting Metro North and Long Island Railroad. When um, the contract was done, we only got uh, one or the other. Now, this is the fault, once again, of the corrupt e-board that I spoke about earlier in this broadcast. They was corrupt. I heard that they showed the contract for eight minutes. How can you show someone a contract for eight minutes on a slide on a screen, expect them to retain the information there, make an educated decision to pass this um, contract down to the members? Because that's how it worked. The MTA president negotiates the contract. He gives it to the e-board for approval before it gets to us. The e-board, once again, is the check and balances of 
the president power and this union. If we have a corrupt e-board, we're going to get corrupt and bad contracts because nobody's going to go against the president. Nobody. We must change that e-board. Now, my plan when it comes to the perks is to get us all the perks all across the board. You know, like I said, since they can't give us the wages that we deserve, rightfully so, give us the easy pass to supplement those those tolls and the money that we may be spending. You know, the um these bridges is fifteen dollars a day. So we talking about what seventy five dollars like it's too much money a week to spend. You know, especially if you nickel and, and diamond it. It's too much, too much, too much money to spend. Now we must we must get the real perks. Now, like I said, I got friends that work for NYPD. They got free easy passes. They got Long Island Railroad um, passes. They got Metro North passes. They get the perks. But how come the people who work for the company don't get the perks? We need to change that. Oh, and another thing I want to bring up to you guys. Only New York City Transit um, do not get the perks. Long Island Railroad, I'm going to explain something to you guys. The, the, the men and women at Long Island Railroad, they get the perks. They family get the perks. They stepkids get the perks. They all get passes to ride this um to ride the system. We don't get those um those privileges. Now back before um in, in the past, I don't know how long ago, but Map Store, they used to get a, a, a pass for their wives, for their spouses. They used to have a spouse pass in Map Store. But overall, we do not get the same perks as Long Island Railroad. We need these perks. Hold on one second. I almost forgot something. Uh, I almost forgot my favorite thing. There we go. Looks better, right? Um, but yeah, we don't. We do not get the perks that we need at all. We need these perks now. Um, this is very important right here. I'm gonna put this on the screen next. Sell out, sell out, sell out, sell out, sell out. The union is running out of people to sell out. And not the union, I'm going to say this administration. They're running out of people to sell out. They done sold out the unborn with tier six, five years top pay, sold us out. Um, they done sold out um, the apprenticeship program. They brought back that program Um with, with, with less individuals involved and it's not as impactful as when Roger had it. They are running out of people to sell out. Now, they still have a few more people to sell out. And for all you people who saying, you know what, it don't matter. I only got three years here. I only got two years here. I got my papers in my back in my front pocket. You guys need to be very careful because this union administration, like I said, is running out of people to sell out. And you guys may be next on the list. How would you feel if the union make a deal to reduce your health care or take away your health care altogether? How would you feel about that? It's very possible. It's very possible. They selling everybody out. Um, I could see it happening under, under this administration. Part-time employees. That's another sellout move. I see that happening. Um layoffs under this administration is still under the table they have no heart they have no fight they have no balls i still see layoffs happening they 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 planning a sellout i could see um a longer wage progression to get the top pay now one thing i could say about long island railroad they got like an eight-year top pay thing but when they get to um top pay they got us by like 10 bucks so I would rather go eight years under the Long Island Railroad system and make that money than the New York City Transit. But picture going from five to seven years under the New York City Transit um, salary. You definitely would not be able to survive. I could see that happening un under this administration. They have room to sell people out. I could see them doing longer probationary periods. A longer probationary period means a longer revolving door if the mta could fire you without you having access to grievances and and to the grievance process and things like that then it's a revolving door because i make 
what, 31 something dollars an hour. A new conductor makes about $21 an hour. So we do the same work. You get the same service for us. So what if the MTA um, create longer probationary periods and keep that revolving door going of cheap labor? Because not only if they not only are they saving hourly um, with, 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 with the labor, but not only are they saving hourly with the labor, but they also don't have to pay pensions and not too much in health care because they keep in the revolving door. That's just that's just how it works. So it's room for local 100 to sell um, their members out. And another thing I want to touch on is the MTA bad discipline practice. They have a horrible discipline practice. Now, one thing that I notice when it comes to the MTA and discipline, they have this practice of, you know what? Um, we're going to give you 10 days but we're going to put 15 on paper. And, you know, the member being in a compromising position, they would look and say, hey, you know what? All right, I'll take the 10 days. I don't care about the 15 on paper. But the 15 days on paper makes a lot of sense for the MTA and not for you. Why? Because if you go and get in trouble again, they not go look at what you actually took. They go look at what's on paper. And that 15 days will no longer be 15 days no more. It will be... 20 25 or maybe a final so if why would the mta do that if you want to give me 10 days in the street then let it be 10 days on paper that's a bad 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 practice that's not favorable for the member i think it's a dishonest practice too that the mta um is doing and and i don't know why the union allowed them to get away with it if you're going first of all discipline is out of control and egregious altogether. They have this weird um, thing in New York City Transit where they start off high at the highest possible. A a anything you do here is 30 in the final almost. But they know that you're not supposed to get 30 in the final. A lot of this stuff you could get reprimand for. But they start off 30 in the final. And if, you, if they bargain you down to 15 days, you still 15 days over the discipline that you were supposed to get in the first place. So picture you hop in a turnstile and you don't know what kind of punishment you go get. You get caught by the police, you go in front of the judge, and you don't know if you go get a fine or you go get five years in jail. Now, you know that you're only supposed to get a fine, but the judge is like, look, we giving you five years in jail. And you're like, oh, no, we can't do that. Now, let's plea bargain. So you plea bargain down and you end up getting a year in jail when you was only supposed to get a ticket. This is the same ideology that the MTA do. They start off high, have you settle for something still high when they know that you could have got a reprimand, a warning, retraining, reinstruction, or something of that nature. This discipline practice is out of control. It's unfair. And I think that it's targeted because of the makeup of this membership. As I touched on plenty of times before, if you watch any one of my live shows, the same infractions that's being committed in Long Island Railroad, um, they getting reprimands over there for, and we getting 30 days in the final over here for a fact. Conductors over there is opening up train doors outside of the station. I got their discipline report from For You, or did a For You request, and they are, they are getting reprimands. No New York City Transit employee conductor is getting a reprimand for opening up doors outside the station unless that employee is secretly related to a higher up to make that charge basically disappear. I do not like it like this thing say right here, like this picture say right here. I do not like it. Um, we need to destroy and rebuild a more fair discipline system. I don't see the fact of you making a mistake and the MTA, the first thing they want to do is take money out of your pocket. That's not how you correct a mistake. You correct a mistake by retraining, better supervision, better understanding of the rules, not digging in somebody's pockets and taking money out. That's punishment. That's, uh, that, uh, it, it makes no sense. The MTA is made, that's why I say it's plantation justice. It's made, it's more punitive than corrective. The MTA don't make no money by correcting us. If they keep on um, keeping us blind to the fact of how to make our 
how to better perform our jobs, then they can't find us and they can't make no money. So the MTA is a money hungry industry, a, a money hungry company. And that's all they want to do. It's a revolving door of that also. If you want to make us better employees, give us better training. For those who don't know, when it comes to the MTA, um, the moment that you put on a uniform and you enter school car, it's a culture affair. It's a direct culture affair. The first thing that these supervisors teach you is that if you mess up, you're going to be fired. That's not how you teach people to be good employees. You're doing the opposite. You don't make people learn by fear. You make people learn by getting them to understand their job fully and they will do it more confidently. You do not get people to have confidence through fear. You, you, you make us apprehensive of making mistakes and fear of losing our job. We, we are afraid to perform these jobs at the best of our ability because of the culture of discipline in New York City Transit. That must stop today with a new administration who's going to be willing to fight for the members tooth to nail. Now, look, this election is going to be real simple, real simple. Matter of fact, I'm not even go not even gonna put that on the screen. Um, this election is going to be real simple. Matter of fact, let me put this back up. This election is going to be real simple. If you want to continue to get poor raises, work rules that don't benefit you, a horrible quality of life. Punitive work rules, a city that you can't afford to live in, health care that seems to get worse, worse, and worse every year. If you're happy with those things, vote stand divided in. If you want change, better pension, 2050, a real livable income in New York City. Choices of health care, better work rules, people, a union who do not give in to the MTA, a union who doesn't lie to the membership, a union who's going to fight tooth to nail to you, for you. Vote progressive action. And I like to tell you guys, look, these are these are my top four. You have Johnny Knowles. Um, administrative VP, he's from the private lines. You have Jocelyn McCray from TA Surface. You have me, of course, from RTO. You have my boy Roberto Martinez from TA Surface. I have assembled a great cast of individuals um, to vote for. My next live will be the ballot itself, explaining to you guys how to vote. If you didn't get your ballot, the number to call, but the next live that I do will have everybody, um, all, all the people who you should vote for if you want change. If you don't want change, if you want the poor raises, if you want the, the, the poor health benefits, the work rules that don't benefit you, the poor longevity pay, whatever it may be, vote stand divided. But if you want change, once again, the, the, the wages that we deserve, the perks that we deserve, the health care that we deserve, the work rules that work for us, the quality of life that works for, for your family and yourself, vote progressive action. These are the people to vote for. We're going to outline the people who you should vote for in the sample ballots. And thanks for tuning in to Digital Sharpgate 2. Please join the Facebook group Progressive Action if you're not in there. Add family, friends, coworkers. Um, let's make this bigger than life. Thanks for tuning in. Peace, guys.